Josh, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing very well indeed. I'm just enjoying a couple of days of uh, vacation, or if you can call it that, <laughs> down in Denmark. So I'm very good. Oh, very nice. Well, thank you for taking your vacation time to be able to do this interview. It is my pleasure entirely. Well, awesome. Well, of course, uh, I'm here to talk to you about the brand new Amaranth album, which will be coming out at the end of the month. Uh, again, thank you for taking the time to do this. Uh, now that you're four albums in, how does it feel uh, having this album out? Oh, it, it's always very, very special when you release a new album because each album means something, you know, different to you. And it's been, it feels like it's been a while since we released Massive Addictive two years ago. So actually, it's very, very exciting. And um, there's a lot of re reviews coming in at the moment, and pretty much all of them are positive. So so, yeah, it's, it's a very exciting situation to be in. Yeah, and that's really what I love about you guys. I mean, now that you're four albums in, I mean, not that the first two albums are not, but ever since Massive Addictive, there is just that more expanding of the diversity that you guys created with the first two albums. And with Maximalism, it definitely showcases that even more. Yeah, I think that was one of the uh, the main concepts when we started to write for this album, because um, not to really answer that critique, but there was a lot of critique uh, regarding, especially two first albums that it was a little bit too much of the same and we in our own world we felt that we were really sort of pushing the bar with uh, with Massive Addictive but there were still quite a bit of opinions that oh but Amaranth are back and it still sounds sort of the same so instead of getting back at that critique we saw it as like a uh, that we had actually had the opportunity to take these things even further. So for this album, we really went all the way with it, as <laughs> as the title so, sort of implies. So I think that we had a lot of creative freedom in this album, and um, and interestingly enough, we also took like almost almost five months uh, off from, from touring as well. So we really had the time to you know really get our hands dirty what we could do in within the whole Amaranth concept. So it was a lot of fun working on this album. Oh, that's awesome! With having those five months off to just uh, kick back and. Just just had, write some new ideas for the album. Did that help inspire creativity or were there already ideas flowing and then that kind of just helped the process along? Well, somehow it sort of feels like the ideas are almost already there. It's it's uh, hard to explain, but it's it's like even before you sit down and write the first note, you sort of have a vision towards where you're going to go. And of course, that vision sort of tends to surprise you every now and then, but it's not really like you sit down a really long time and you have to force and squeeze it. So a, a lot of that time, uh, those five months actually went into, you know, finding new sounds and new perspectives on, um, like, the keyboard part and also, you know, different sort of, you know, ways to play the guitar and orchestral arrangements for a ballad on Endlessly and so on. So, uh, but what, in, in terms of composing, it's always a very, um, a very spontaneous and a very creative thing. Yeah, and I think the best music comes from that as well. The more that you have to force something to work, it's not going to work. Uh, exactly. I mean, I always said that even if you have a sort of sort of a mediocre idea, you can still sort of dress it up with a lot of nice keyboards and you know a cool guitar solo and vocal lines, but the song will still be a mediocre song. So we don't really sit down. A lot of bands I know they sort of work the other way around. They sit down, they make some amazing arrangements and, and great riffs and, and whatever, but then it, it can be hard to force that on, you know onto a vocalist in terms of uh, vocal lines and lyrics and whatever and the end result ends up feeling a little bit forced, if you know what I mean. So we, we always make sure that the skeleton of the song, if you just play it on piano or, or like guitar and vocals, it should be amazing uh, already at that point and not because you add a lot of arrangements and a cool studio production and so on. Were there any riffs that were particularly challenging for the new album or was it like you said where it just uh, felt natural? I mean, in terms of... Um, musical challenges i mean you always have <laughs> you always have a few chances when you're working in, in, in the studio so it's not necessarily that challenging in that aspect but um, i think you know in terms of solos and stuff like that i think that on a couple i think i pushed it even a little bit further than i'm you know i'm used to technically and performance wise so that was a lot of fun actually like the solo to uh, to fireball for example it contains a lot of crazy stuff so oh yeah and i was just going to bring that up too i mean fireball is one of the, is one of the songs that uh, really stuck out to me guitar wise because of the solo like that i mean 
The, the rest of the song isn't nearly as technical as that solo, but it, it also helps that solo stand out more. Yeah, exactly. And uh, as you said before, the, the album is all about the diversity and the contrast and stuff like that. So we really love to play around with uh, with that kind of contrast that sometimes the, uh, the riffs are stupidly simple and then for the next part comes something, you know, mega technical. We I, Usually I always play what I find right for the song. And if you have a song like Fireball, which is very laid back in the riffs, but still a bit, sort of a very intense song in terms of keyboards and vocals and stuff like that, then what I played there was a necessity for, for the song to, to get that extra, extra fire. <laughs> Oh, very much so. So, what went into the idea of releasing that song and Fury as the singles for the album? Uh, just try to piss off a lot of people at the same time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but it, I mean, to, to, to be honest, we, we had a lot of different, you know, um, perspectives of what would be a great single to release. And, and to be honest, the, the one track that stuck with us the almost the entire time was, uh, was Boomerang, uh, track number two on the album. But then there was suggestions coming from uh, both from within the band and from the record label that that song is a really cool song and it's something very, very different. And at first I was like, whoa, but there's going to be a war. And then I was like, whoa, there's going to be a war. That's pretty cool. So we, we're not co- uh, consciously trying to piss anybody off, but I think with a song like Boomerang, which is, is probably more of a classic Amaranth track, there could have been, you know, the opposite reaction that, oh, well, Amaranth are back and now they sort of sound the same. So um, I think it's a lot more common these days not to just release one lead single and then two months after you really the album like we did on the first record i think th- these days it's a lot more common that you release two or maybe even three songs leading up to the to the album so f- from my perspective when people start to talk about that song then i was like okay so let's really show off the, um, the diversity of the album because I, I really love fury as a song and it's you know highly energetic and it's of course sort of the polar opposite to that song yeah so I'd, i've I found it really interesting to do it like that and on top of this we're actually going to re- release the song maximize tomorrow oh very cool yeah, I mean, those are definitely three songs that uh, reach the different corners of the album as well. I mean, when I first heard that song, it was a bit of a, a shock to me because I wasn't necessarily expecting that. And and not in a bad way, but uh, just like huh? I'm so used to the Amaranth sound, I was not expecting that. But again, like I said before, I do appreciate the diversity that you guys are going for. And uh, ever since Massive Addictive, and when I finally got to sit down with Maximalism and finally listen to the album, the, all the songs really do work well in context with each other. Yeah, it, it might seem more extreme, of course, when you listen to that song by itself, like, where is the Amaranth sound? But when you put it next to a song like, like Boomerang and uh, Maximize, and uh, I think it's 21 coming right after that, that song, it, I mean, it has a very natural place on the album. And I think that, you know, in terms of um, getting people to actually react as well, I think it really um, I think it really paid off also when you look at, you know, uh, how it's streaming on YouTube and, and so on and so forth. I mean, of course, uh, we, we write the songs for ourselves, but it's also cool if you know people are digging it and picking it up and of course like i said it created a lot of controversy on the facebook but when you go on to youtube you can see that it's still 80 percent that gave like a thumbs up for for positive so the whole thing paid off <laughs> really well at the end of the day and i'm sure a lot I of think- those people that were uh not happy about it on facebook were probably the ones that were giving it likes on youtube as well yeah i mean it's always going to be the initial shock and also seeing like when we have posted about that song afterwards there's been a lot of people who came around and especially after the release of the of um the second single fury as well so yeah i mean that's the important thing i mean you can never judge an album by the first single that you hear from it you got to hear everything in context with each other for it to really make sense yeah yeah exactly it's like uh, like judging metallica's black album after uh, nothing else matters you, you got to hear the whole thing of course oh absolutely so uh, have you guys had the chance to perform any of the new songs live yet oh we did we actually played that song we played it in tokyo moscow and uh, st petersburg and and the, the response to it was just absolutely phenomenal, especially in Moscow. The entire show was just electrifying. And for us, it was interesting because there's a lot of, you know, core, hardcore fans in, in Russia, naturally. I mean, they're pretty much hardcore about, about everything in that country, of course, and in that city. So, but they responded really well to it. So that was a lot of fun to perform it there. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah, like you said, it's a great opportunity to be, to be able to premiere 
new songs like that over there because they do have such a great fan base for this style of music. Yeah, I mean, I always get a little bit surprised when we go over there because every time we go back to Moscow, for example, it's always an extra three or four hundred people since the last time we were there. So it's it's always really cool. And um, I think um, it's going to be really, really interesting now to see. Uh, I think it's starting at the end of next week or right, right after that. <clears throat> we're going to start like the whole, you know, European tour and the whole touring cycle for Maximalism. So um, from there on, we're going to play five new songs and we're gonna, going to play it for a very, you know, um, a European fan base that we've had for quite quite some time so the response is going to be really really interesting and with that i mean of course having been able to tour so many places now with amaranth have you noticed much of a change between say north america and europe as far as what songs work best to be honest it's actually strikingly similar because you would you would think that some people say uh, that okay but this song would work re really good in the u.s this is sort of an american song this could be played on american radio and some some other person would go like yeah but this is typically Finnish because this is more towards that and that style but that is not typically what we have experienced to be honest it, people tend to react sort of similar even though if we're in the Czech Republic Italy or you know Canada or Mexico or in New York City people tend to jump on the same songs they scream on the same parts and I think that the the Amaranth fa fans are there are a certain kind of breed of, of fans that are very open-minded and not necessarily into just one thing if you know what I mean yeah and that definitely shows the worldwide appeal of the band as well when no matter where you tour, no matter where the fan base is, they can agree on the same songs. Yeah, I mean, it can be slightly puzzling. <laughs> Sometimes, like, uh, just the other week, we uh, when we played in Russia, we also played this place called Yekaterinburg, and it's on the Asian side of Russia, in the middle of nowhere. It's closer to Siberia than actual civilization, and still you have, like, almost a thousand people showing up, and they know the lyrics and, and everything. And to me, that is that is very strange, actually, but it's a very, very cool thing. Yeah, very much so. And, and now with having four albums uh, soon to be out it's it's great to be able to have four albums worth of material to choose from yeah it's gonna be a complete hit mayhem <laughs> no but it's um, we're actually uh, right now we just put together the set list for um, for the european tour and it's gonna be the core for the um for the upcoming North American tour as well. Oh. And there's a lot of possibilities now, now that we have four albums out. There's a lot of stuff that we can do with surprises and bring back songs that we haven't played for a long time, but we still really like playing and so on. So it's it's been it's challenging, but it's a lot of fun to put um, put together a set list these days with four albums out. Yeah, and, and with that, uh, it, with the set list uh, just coming together, uh... How, how much time did it take to be able to get that into a working order? Are, are you guys keeping a static set, or is there some songs that can be switched out? I mean, I think there are some songs that just needs to be part of an Amaranth set, at least so far. I mean, you have songs like Hunger in the Nexus and Drop Dead Cynical and uh, Amaranthine and so on. <clears throat> it's, it's songs that should be there, because otherwise, you know, fans might get disappointed. But yeah, I mean, this time we started to play around with the set list already a couple of months ago. So we've been just been having that in the back of our head, and then we sat down and really worked with it beginning last week. So, I mean, we're also lo looking at having a bit of a, you know, more dynamic set list to have, like, you know, more possibilities to, to just switch out songs for, for specific shows just because we feel like it or because, you know, it feels like that kind of night, so let's play that <laughs> that song. No, but um, <laughs> you see what I mean. It's, um, I think that to, since we've uh, toured both North America and Europe so extensively and we plan to continue to do that, I think we need to have as much variation for the shows as possible. Yeah, and that's going to make it more fun for you guys as well. That way you don't get sick of the song that you've you've written even though you enjoyed them at the time i mean when you would just have to play the same songs and you can't play other songs it you don't want to ever get sick of them oh exactly i'm very equally sick of all the songs so, no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> but no but the thing is that it was a little bit like that when you had you know the uh, the first album for example we were actually touring um quite extensively with just one album out and i think that's a very rare thing for for a band to be doing so when we were supporting camelot and um and hammerfall since the songs are more compact and shorter in length as well we were just playing the whole album every day for like two years so for, for each uh, album that we have released it, it gets a lot more dynamic and a lot more interesting for us as well yeah i was gonna say when you just have to focus on one album for 
a, a whole touring cycle, it really does make you want to try more dynamics and go in more directions. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And especially with the release of the Nexus, because, I mean, that album, the, the very purpose of it was to release, and because we really found that we had, you know, found an, a very special sound that a lot of people seem to like, but especially ourselves. We really like to write music within that concept. So there was a lot of similarities. And, I mean, it was, the Nexus was written very much as a, as a sequel to the first album, much more so than, you know, Massive Addictive or Maximalism, for example. So with the release of Massive Addictive, it was a necessity for us to try to branch out a little bit more. And the same thing now as well, that now we have everything from songs like An Ordinary Abnormality from the last album, which is a very fast track, or Fury to that song to, you know, slow songs like Burn With Me and Amaranthine. So there's a lot of potential as well with the dynamics. Oh, very much so. <coughs> and, and speaking of uh, variation, have you changed your guitar setup at all since the last album? Uh, do you mean for the for, for the album recording or for the uh, touring? Uh, either way. I mean, uh, just like uh, anything uh, guitar or amp specific that's changed around? Yeah, I'm actually uh, I'm playing with um, Jackson guitars these days. Uh, instead of, uh, I was playing comparison for many many years for 11 years but they had a um, restructuring of their uh, company and moved to to london and in my opinion i will still always you know think that they are great guitars but it's really not the same thing as it was when it was like these super mega fancy boutique guitar uh, boutique guitars from uh, from japan so uh, and i've been in contact with uh, with jackson for quite some time and um, they had a lot of very very cool ideas of you know where we could go you know in terms of instruments and customs and you know stuff like that so so that is a very exciting prospect and um, um when it comes to amps in the studio i've always played a variety of different angle amps so i'm doing that again this time it's both a powerball a fireball it's a savage 120 and also a special edition so it's being used for uh, especially fireball is used for almost all the solos I think. Oh, but a really cool thing is that I'm using a Line 6 uh, Helix like multi-effect um, pedal, which actually sounds really, really good uh, live, and it's very, very convenient as well. So when you have a quick sound uh, like you know, a changeover for a festival or something like that, you can just uh, plug in a couple of XLR cables and plug in your wireless and you're ready to go, pretty much. So I really like that one, and it can switch between very, very different types of sound as well. And I've been, you know, my entire career I've been, been very skeptical about these uh, uh, kinds of pedals but i think the technology is there these days that it's almost as good as a real amp but a hundred times more versatile and um convenient yeah and that definitely helps just like you said in the live aspect uh, for the summer festival circuits i mean being able to set up your gear as fast as possible to be able to be prepared for your sets i mean it's very important yeah yeah exactly and um i mean the whole helix thing i mean if you're a guitar player you need to check it out because it has a lot of really cool features like um it has like this big HD color screen so you can really, you know, get into um, working on delays and EQs and compressors and, and everything and get a quick overview of it as well, which makes it a lot easier to customize your sounds as well. So that pedal is, uh, it's very, very, very cool to use. Oh, very cool. Uh, so uh, you mentioned in a week or so you're going to be heading off for the European tour and you did mention about uh, upcoming North American dates. Is there anything else planned for the rest of the year and 2017? Yeah, the, the there is, um, there is a bit. We're going to uh, kick off the North American tour by um, playing a cruise to Haiti. It's the 70,000 tons of metal, if you heard about it. Oh, yes. Yeah, so that's going to that's gonna be a lot of fun. And then we're also, actually, we're going to uh, North Africa in uh, December. We're going to Algeria. And we've never been there before, so that's going to be interesting. Oh, that's really cool. I mean, yeah, I mean, again, that shows just the appeal of the band to be able to hit all these territories you never imagined that you'd be able to play. No, I wasn't really seeing seeing the band playing in North Africa uh, like like ever but I mean from from what I, what I heard the scene is actually really good in Tunisia and Algeria so that's going to be really exciting actually so and I mean we, we start the tour now on October 24th and it runs until the end of November and then we have that uh, a couple of shows in in December and I mean that's that's the rest of the year already and then the 70,000 tons of metal is in early February so we're probably going to take a little bit of downtime in in January just to prepare for North America yeah and that definitely makes sense I mean when you're at full speed all the time when it comes to touring and not having any time off it can definitely wear you out so you're definitely doing it the right way by taking some time off 
off at the end of the year. Yeah, it's very much needed. I mean, we're still super excited. And then as soon as you kick off a tour, then you're, you're always like in, in full gear and you're in, um, you're in a great mood and you're performing every night. So that keeps your energy at the, your highest point as well. So it usually works out. But the last the last five years, man, they've been crazy, I can tell you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And having been able to see you guys as much as I have here in Minnesota, it's awesome to see the level that you guys have gotten to this point where you can consistently tour and continue to grow that fan base yeah absolutely and i mean that's a that's like the one thing that um you know every band is that is you know on their way up is working for so we were of course immensely grateful for that and i mean minnesota has always been really good as well i remember we played at i think it was back in 2014 and nathan was set, setting up that show oh yeah is it called it rock uh triple rock yep. yeah yeah exactly i remember that was the first time we ever played electro hard live <laughs> i remember that no i mean yeah of course absolutely i mean i remember all the shows that we did in minnesota uh, and also last um it's summer also we played at this really really cool venue that in flames played the day after as well but i don't remember the name of it uh, but were you there i, I want to say that was mill city nights i, I want to say it was mill city nights. yeah yeah i was <laughs> and again that was a great show as well i mean whether it's at a smaller venue like the triple rock or being able to get to the, the mid-sized level here in minnesota with uh, mill city nights i mean just alone in that couple years being able to get that much higher here in the states it's just it's so cool to see for a band yeah that was that was very very cool because it was just slightly over a year so we have to be very grateful for that i think oh very much so so of course um, <laughs> one thing that has been announced so far in north america is your guys's appearance at prog power next year which i already right. have my tickets for and it's gonna be amazing to see you at prog power again because last year i saw you twice with Dragonland. oh yeah yeah we played two shows <laughs> that was unexpected <laughs> to say the least but that was a very very cool show it was really cool to play with the guys uh, from Dragonland in uh, North America for the first time and it, I mean it was something that we've been dreaming about for the, for the last 15 years since we started the band so and the re response was great and uh, the show felt really really good so so cool that you were there and it's gonna be great now to be to be back next year it's it's such a cool festival with very very enthusiastic people as well so it's usually always great oh yeah and it, it just makes me happy that um, over the span of three years you got to play three sets at least so far um, oh, three for, sets? For, for prog power I mean uh, with the two yeah. sets last year with Dragonland and <laughs> exactly. then next year with Amaranth I mean over the span of three years you got to play prog power three sets yeah exactly we played there back in uh, 2012 as well so that will make it four, four times in five years I guess <laughs> yeah exactly um, and speaking of Dragonland is there anything on the horizon for you guys or are you just a uh, full-fledged Amaranth mode right now I mean it's been a lot of Amaranth obviously but um, and we have one show scheduled uh, for next month in Switzerland the problem though is that we have another show scheduled with um, Amaranth the very same night which is also by co complete coincidence in Switzerland as well so I unfortunately I can't join them for for that show so they will have, have a replacement there but with that said we have the ambition to hopefully if everything works out uh, right to have out uh, a new album out next year because we have a bunch of new songs that we're really enthusiastic over so so hopefully um, we get to work on that and maybe in, in January in some other time where there's some time off. Oh, very cool. And that, that makes me happy as a fan of both Amaranth and Dragonland. It's great to see that both bands are getting new material written for them and being able to play just a bit more with Dragonland. But of course, with Amaranth uh, taking off the way that it has over these years, it's just fantastic to see that you are able to make this work so very well. Um, I mean, it's really a dream come true. And uh, I think it's a very special thing that we still get to play occasional shows with Dragonland. Even if we're not out touring all the time, the shows that we do play are always like well attended and um the fans are really great and it's it's a lot of fun of course to get it back with the guys that i've been playing with for for 16 years and just and just hit the stage and you know see seeing people respond to it so but yeah we're in a very very lucky situation with amaranth i mean we could never have expected this when we started off just like six years ago so it's i mean it's not a long time for a band to to get to this size so naturally we're very excited about that oh very much so well once again thank you for taking the time to do this interview i've always wanted to talk to you ever since i discovered dragonland back in the mid 2000s and once i first heard uh amaranth with self-titled just it was amazing to be able to see the diversity and creativity that you can have between the two bands and of course all the other work that you've been a part of as well just being a fan thank you so very much for taking the time to do this interview before we're done is there anything else you'd like to mention that i haven't brought up yet i think that we covered uh, we covered quite a bit and um yeah i can just add that we're really really excited to, to come back to uh, to north america next year it's been a little while now so 
and it's always super super great so see all of you american fans there very 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 soon and also thank you very much for taking the time josh it was an absolute pleasure oh likewise uh, ag- again like uh, after discovering Dragonland, uh and then of course with amaranth and night rage and all the bands that you've been a part of it's just uh, as one of my favorite guitarists this just really meant a lot to me to be able to talk to you oh thank you man it means a lot thank you so much for for, for saying that that's very cool of you man oh absolutely no problem